welcome to Mars Hill United Methodist Church. We are here celebrating Christ the King Sunday. We appreciate being able to hear, hear the bells today in this celebratory day of the church year. This is the close of the year, actually. Next week, we start in with Advent, the, the beginning of the new year. So we celebrate today, then, this uh, this reigning of Christ, this celebration time. And just to let you know a, a few announcements for what is coming up. So next Sunday, the 29th, the first Sunday of Advent, we are having a Zoom fellowship hanging of the green service. And it's going to be at, uh, right at noon, so you can finish watching the service. If you watch it then, if you don't, you can just click in at noon and we will do a, a, a hanging of the greens, as, as a Zoom call. This is new, we haven't done it this way, so it'll be fun, something different to do. So if you gather some things, maybe you're not quite ready to decorate your whole house yet. If you are, that's great, but if you haven't, uh, if, you, if you have a wreath to pull out or a garland, uh, or even if you just have a, a piece of paper, we're gonna do a little art project to, to um, connect the Chrismon art, uh, ornaments to your home tree. So I invite you, we'll have a, we'll have a list that'll come out in the, in the email newsletter this week. So you'll be able to get ready for that service. Also know on that same Sunday at 4 p.m., so the 29th at 4 p.m., we are having our charge conference meeting. So the district superintendent, it's, it's on Zoom, and the district superintendent will be with us for that. So if you want to come to that meeting, you're, you're welcome to. If you're on the church council, uh, we invite you that you would be there. Um, also, to let you know, um, of course, Thanksgiving is coming up, and uh, I want to make sure that, that everyone um, has a, a very <coughs> safe, Thanksgiving. So uh, think about with your plans and make sure you're planning in a way that allows for Thanksgiving to continue on for years to come. So be careful with with gatherings. The, there's a lot of danger out there with the, the virus right now. So just invite you to be careful. If you would like to participate in the Thanksgiving meal or in the, uh, which is we're just buying a gift card for some people that would need help with that. And so Ann is coordinating that. So if you'd like to pitch in some to that, let Ann know. Also, if you would like to uh, help with the angel for the Christmas tree gifts for a family in need, Ann also has that information. So you can find out information for a gift that you could, that you could give. So, a little more. Uh, we also have our, our, our regular uh, fellowship. Don't miss the Sunday school class. It's, it is an excellent thing to, to connect to and be a part of. We won't be doing the Thursday on Thanksgiving. Well, you can if you want to. You can click in if you're by yourself on Thursday. People do that. I won't be there, but, <laughs> but click in there if you want to. Um, so, now... Let us prepare ourselves for worship. I invite you to open your hearts and your minds and be open for the transformation by the Holy Spirit this day. Amen. Oh, 
It's now time in our service for our prayer concerns. I'd like you to continue to pray for those we've had on our list, for Pierre and for Phyllis taking care of him, for Chuck, and then for Carol as well. Um, let's keep in, in prayer Barbara and Luke and Cheyenne, Frida and Jean and Patricia, Ruth and... Um, Remember, continue to remember Bob, Anne's father-in-law, and, and the family. Um, continue to pray for all those who are sick with COVID. The numbers are so high now. It's very concerning. So just pray for those who are sick. Pray for um, those who are mourning for for whatever or how, however recent it's been, but let's, there's a lot of mourning happening in our country now and coming into a Christmas season can be a very hard time. So please pre, please, play, be, please pray for those who mourn. Um, pray for our country, for peace. It feels as though our democratic systems are being tested right now. So let us pray for peace and um, steady hand for folks that uh, that we can move through this time and and be a stronger country for it so please please continue to pray for our country let us be in an attitude of prayer gracious and loving God we give you thanks for this day we give you thanks for this holy day where we celebrate the reign of Christ the reign of Christ in our lives now, God's presence in our world now. Let us rejoice for that because we need it so. Lord, we hold up to you, our country, that you would shower us in your grace and peace, that you would um, bring strength and processing in the place that we are at now, and Lord, just your touch in this world. Lord, we hold up to you all those who are sick with COVID. We hold up to you all those who are struggling, who are mourning, who are challenged by this time. Lord, we, we hold up to you, especially this day, Pierre, Phyllis, Chuck, and Carol. Cheyenne and Luke, Bob and his family, Barbara and Ruth, Frida and Jean and Patricia. And for all those concerns that were not mentioned aloud, Lord, you know the needs of our hearts. We lift them to you. We ask all this in your son's name who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Tempted and tried, we're off me to why it should be thus all the day long While there are others living about us Never molested, going no wrong We continue our reading in the 25th chapter of Matthew. And in my opinion, in Matthew's uh, 25th chapter, he saves the best for last. So this is starting with the 31st verse, going through verse 46, the end of the chapter. Hear now the word. Now when the human one comes in his majesty, and all his angels are with him, he will sit on his majestic throne. All the nations will be gathered in front of him. He will separate them from each other, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right side, but the goats he will put on his left. 
Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who will receive good things from my father, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. I was hungry, and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was imprisoned, and you visited me. <laughs> then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you as a stranger and welcome you, or naked and give you clothes to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will reply to them, I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. Then he will say to those in his left, get away from you, you who will receive terrible things. Go into the unending fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry and you didn't give me food. To eat. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't welcome me. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and didn't do anything to help you? Then he will answer, I assure you, that when you haven't done it for one of these, you haven't, one of the least of these, you haven't done it for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous ones will go into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There was a time when I was driving across the country and I saw a sign I came across and it said, Jesus is coming, are you ready? And it listed a Bible verse. I, I can't remember what it was, but it was something out of Revelation. At that moment, I wished I had enough money to buy the billboard right behind it to put a message up that said, Jesus is here. Did you notice? Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. Well, yes, I understand this passage does talk about this eternal judgment of the good and the bad, of this separating out and this punishment time, I have to admit, that part doesn't inspire me a great deal. I don't deny that it is in there. It is. Maybe I just don't have sufficient delayed gratification enough to make my decisions and judgments and actions in the world based on what will happen in this future time. Now what's interesting to me is where Jesus says that we will find him. As I was trekking across the country back in 1998, driving through many, many states, getting my way to Calexico, California, where I was a US-2 missionary uh, for two years there. It's a young adult development program for the Methodist Church. And that was an interesting time for me. In my spiritual journey, some of you have heard parts of, these, of this story, at least in, in my spiritual journey at that time, I, I really wasn't sure if I believed in Jesus. I mean, certainly I was completely willing to do whatever God led me to do, and I certainly believed that Jesus had been around and taught wonderful things, and 
But I, I wasn't really sure what to do with this Son of God declaration. What did that mean? I wasn't sure, but I was following where God told me to go. It is also true that that is not where I wanted to go. I was much more keen on God having sent me to seminary then, but that was not the order of things. No, God, I, I felt clearly that God was leading me to this instead of going to seminary. I was hoping seminary would be next, but part of me was also resentful that it wasn't now. It's also true that as the uh, global board of, of uh, ministry had originally told me to, that I would be probably headed to uh, Puerto Rico, that was beautiful and exciting. And instead, I was heading to that part of the map of the United States that, you know, where it gets back when they had the old part where the lines got smaller and smaller, that hottest space. Yeah, that was where I was heading, that very hottest space south of Death Valley. It's always a really good way to describe it. When I came in, it was definitely over 110 that day. And it was quite some time before I could think any thought that wasn't, oh, it's so hot. I'm not supposed to be here. I wanted to be in seminary, or at least Puerto Rico, not here. It's miserable. This isn't right. And I struggled a lot to try to figure that out. I remember one time shortly when I was there, shortly after I was there, there was a fair and I went to, to represent the neighborhood house and talk with people. And I struck up a conversation with this, with this man. And he was talking about a drug rehab program he was in and, and how he had come to know Jesus. And he was speaking about it in such a way that I was thinking about this was a very conservative branch of Christianity, which I felt was rather different than the branch of Christianity I was in. And in my mind, I couldn't help myself. I was sort of parsing up the differences. When at some point I realized what I was doing and I really looked at this man and, and what difference does it really make how one interprets the gospel compared to knowing that you're loved and there's grace. I felt the fullness of how important that was at that moment. And there were other moments of times when I would spend, I, I, I stayed in the, the homeless shelter and when I would, I would see the kids and play with them out on the playground and, and talk with the moms and little bits that I could with what little bit of Spanish I had or with those who knew some English. Slowly over time, I'm not sure, but I just connected with more people. And there was a moment when I realized, yeah, this is where I'm supposed to be. May not like the temperature or the scenery, but this is where I'm supposed to be. And then one day I was reading the Joshua book, which is a like a parable of Jesus coming back as this uh, master carpenter. And I realized in this scene in the book where one of the characters realizes that this is indeed Jesus, I found myself crying. And realizing regardless of how I can explain it theologically, how little sense it could make to be fully human and fully divine that if Jesus were in front of me right then, there was nothing I could do but to wash his feet with my tears and dry them with my hair. I don't think that the difference was the glorious writing of this particular book. I don't know that it was one particular instance that made a difference. But in some way, through my experience there, I had met Christ. 
Now in reflecting on this passage, I realized that's where he said he would be all along. Not being punished in hell doesn't really motivate me a great deal, but knowing that I can see Christ, care for Christ, do something for Christ to bring comfort, that is very motivating. Now, if the other is motivating for you, then that's, that's fine. Then let that be a motivation. But rejoice in the fact that Jesus is promised that he's here with us. That whenever we are in the places of the greatest distress in our life, that Jesus is there most clearly. And whenever we can minister to people who are in the greatest distress, we can know Christ through it. I mean, really, the way this passage ties up really brings together the rest of the, of the uh, chapter. Because remember the bridesmaids? How Jesus didn't let them in, or how the bridegroom, the groom did not let them in because I never knew you. They hadn't taken time to know him, taking care of those who are in need. Now this, this might be a hard thing for us to really jump into in the midst of a pandemic when really the most kind thing we can do for people is to keep some distance, to keep ourselves and others safe. We can give. There are opportunities where we can we can offer money to help provide for, for those who are hurting, and, and that is something that we do. And if you want some opportunities of ways to give in, in, in different ways, I can, I can certainly help you find if there's a ministry that you would like to connect to. The United Methodist Church is all over the world, and it's great at trying to get, at, at being able to funnel and take resources to, to folks who are in need. There's lots of opportunity for that. But when the world is back to normal, I encourage you, Meet Jesus face to face. Now, maybe you can do it now. Maybe you are in a helping profession, taking care of, of people, teaching or nursing, or, or just in the people that you would connect to when you see need, when you see hurt. Rather than being irritated or disgusted or angered, you can be compassionate. You can be caring. And you can have the opportunity to show that to Christ himself. And in that, know Christ better. I encourage that we all will be better in our faith, more grounded in our faith if we can do this. I know that in the times of my life when I have worked where I'm spending more time with those in greatest need, that has been the most spiritually grounded times for me. And of course, I was spending the most time with Jesus then. What a gift. What a gift he offers us. If we have that opportunity to meet Christ face to face, why wouldn't we take it? It would be hurting ourselves as much as another. He's there waiting for us. We just have to have the courage to reach back and care for him. Let us pray. Gracious God, for all the times in our lives when we have looked the other way, 
where we have not reached out to help, where we have not connected and cared for others. Lord, for all the times we have missed the opportunity of taking care of you, we are sorry. We are sorry we missed that opportunity. But Lord, we rejoice that you are gracious. And in silence, we lift to you all the things that we have done or left undone that fall short of your great calling. We lift them to you that you might surround us with your grace that you might bring us your breath of life. As you breathe in, imagine that being the light of Christ going within you. If there are any places of hurt or guilt, if there's any places that that, that need God's grace, I invite you to breathe that light within you and imagine in it going and healing, unbinding your heart and letting grace permeate throughout you. Christ's name we pray. Amen. Without doubt, God's grace is greater than anything we have done that has fallen short. No, without doubt. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and made clear. Thanks be to God. Amen. because of this passage, because of this promise of Christ, that caring for those in need is a sacrament. It's a way that we physically connect with Christ. While I doubt the church would let go of the sacraments within their controls of the church, I find that a very compelling argument, a way where we connect with Christ directly. Carry the light of Christ within you. Let it carry you so that you might care for Christ in the world. Go in peace and power. Amen.